Uh, hi, I'm Joey. I'm going to do a single pass infusion on the Ozma. This is sort of our standard recipe uh, that gives a really nice like four to five ounces of cold extracted coffee. Um, so for the grinder, I'm using Baratza Encore. You can use something more advanced or something around this level. Um, you basically want to set it, I'm, I'm at like a seven on the Encore, you want to set it a little bit coarser than you'd use for espresso. Uh, a little bit finer than you'd use for AeroPress, but this is something that you'll you'll dial in with your Osma depending on the grinder that you're using. So I'm gonna grind some right now. And something that I do want to show is how to insert the straw. You don't have to do this every time you do an extraction, but when you're first setting up your Osma or you're switching between the recirculation straw and the single pass straw, this is something good to, to do. So number one, make sure that the elbow is tightly connected to the straw. This can actually detach if you want it to, but it, it comes connected. It should just be firmly there. Um, and then what you want to do is put the end of the elbow into the input port on the Osma, the front of it, and you push it in, and you really push it in very tight until it goes all the way, and it'll still wiggle around a little bit, that's part of the design, but it should now be watertight so that it can provide a good suction and, uh, and get the brew going. Um, all right, so I have my ground coffee. I'm going to measure out about 26 grams into the portafilter. As I'm putting the coffee in, I don't want to tamp it until the end, but I can kind of tap it on the table just to settle the top surface so I can get the full, the full amount in there. All right, once I have that, I am going to tamp it. So I, this comes with the Osma. It's actually a tamper slash distributor. So I put it on. And I spin it to get a really nice surface on the top of that coffee. And actually, this one, this is a good example, it's not totally at the right depth. So if it's not tamping down fully on the, uh, the coffee in the portafilter, you can unscrew this top part and then extend by unscrewing it the, it's not really a blade, but like the tamping surface, the camming surface right there. You just create a little bit more height and then when you put it back, you should feel a little bit of the resistance of the coffee against this. So you can kind of get it to just the right depth. There we go. And if it's going correctly, once it's fully tamped down, you want the coffee, you want the uh, distribution tamper to sort of be able to spin freely, floating on this really smooth uh, surface of coffee in the portafilter. So there we go, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna put it into the machine. And when you tighten the portafilter, it, it's not important so much where the handle lies relative to the direction of the machine. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit more uh, past the 90 degree, sometimes it's gonna to wanna to stop before the 90 degree. You don't wanna extend a ton of force on forcing it closed. Um, if you just kinda of get it in there somewhat firmly, uh, the seal should be fine. Uh, you don't want to force it. 
Okay. Now this part, I put my water source on the side of the machine, put the straw inside of the cup. I have my receptacle, which is an identical cup in this case, but it's empty. And now I'm going to pulse the power button. And the power button actually acts as a momentary switch if you don't press it in all the way. So that means I press it when I release the pressure. If I don't press it in all the way, it, the pump will stop. So what I'm going to do is kind of walk in the water into the port filter. See the water goes down here, and I'm going to watch the opening of the port filter to see when those first drops are coming out. Just with that like couple second interval. Yep. Okay. So now that liquid has started to come out, I'm going to let it sit for about 20 to 30 seconds. And that allows the um, water to kind of evenly diffuse through the coffee and the portafilter. <coughs> and now I'm going to let it go. <coughs> now what you're seeing, the stream coming out of the portafilter starts to get sort of a milky opaque white, whitish white brown. That should just about do it. And if you want to be fancy, I want to be fancy sometimes, you can actually take the straw out of the, uh, the supply cup and run the pump again to clear all the liquid out of the lines in the portafilter. The pump is designed to run dry so that's not a danger to the device. So here's, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> If you look at the extraction, this is pretty much what you want to achieve, where you have these three layers. You have the bottom layer, which is going to be sort of just the coffee without as many microbubbles. A middle layer, which is going to be the majority of the volume right after extraction, but it's going to dissipate into the bottom layer and then the top layer, which is not really a crema. It's more like a head that you would get on like a, a draft beer. Um, but that is sort of where the, the microbubbles end up forming uh, once the extraction is done for a couple minutes. And that's it. So I'll add some ice to this. Yep, and you can see if you look down on it, the crema slash head is like really tenacious. And that's another good sign that the extraction went as we wanted it to. And I'm going to taste it. 